I would say one of the first memories that I think about is I think about uh, down behind our house, there's a, a little garage. It used to be an old um, uh, horse barn. We used to have harness racing horses in there, and a little oval outside the house. And I remember as a kid going down there, and after all the races on Sunday, as they come back from Onslow and Truro, they had packed the cars in there and cracked some beers. And I remember being outside as a kid with a little hammer, trying to straighten out all the dents that he got in the car. So there's nothing he wouldn't race. He's raced horses, he's raced snowmobiles, cars. He's combined the two. I never personally laid eyes on it, but there was a snowmobile that had a small block Chev engine in it. You know, it didn't matter what class of car, it didn't matter. Could be a pro stock, could be a street stock, hobby stock, whatever. He'd drive it. Just loved to race. I went to Scotia Speed World um, uh, to watch him race open wheel modifieds. Uh, and it was the time that he, uh, they put him to the back three times. Uh, he still come up and won. It was his old uh, Vegas station wagon he had. Uh, that he'd get out, he took his trophy as they presented it to him, and he threw it against the front stretch wall, grabbed his steering wheel, and walked to the pits and left his car on the front stretch. That's what I remember. And that's what got me hooked on racing, was going and watching all the controversy and that sort of stuff, yeah. so. But that's my first recollection. <laughs> the big thing, I, I, he's a showman, but he's not shiny. He's pretty modest. His favorite color is flat black, you know. I talked him into satin black on one there last year a little bit, and that was a big step up for him. But, uh, uh, you know, he, he's, uh, he does it his way. You know, my dad's the kind of guy that if you look at his, all you gotta do is look at his race car. Sometimes you can tell the kind of racer they are by the race car. So what that means is, you know, is it all like perfectly shiny? Has it got lots of logo sponsors on it? Like that, you might think that is the way that, you know, racing should look like. But then you look at Cy Harvey's car, chances are he might have taken a buffer to it and scratched all the paint off it for a while. He was calling it the rat rod, and it was just like maybe a hand-painted number on the side of it. Um, but that, uh, it's because he didn't care about that kind of stuff, right? It was all like, it was all about the racing. Well, he showed up at Onslow Speedway with one of these Monte Carlos with the roll cage on the outside of the car. Not the inside, the outside. So uh, Ernie Lev, which was our race director at the time, he just shook his head. He said, Cy, you can't run that. So it almost said, I'm Cy Harvey. I'm different from everybody else, and I'm doing this my way. And you're going to like it or lump it. And it could be ugly, and a lot of the time it was. And sometimes it had flat black paint on it. But, uh, you know, there's so many. And that's what, that's just the things that made Sai Sai. You know, over the years, he always, he might not always be running up front, but you knew he was there. He always stood out. Russell White uh, uh, sponsored a Macar one year, and that was like for their lumber company out in Kennecook. And he was, uh, he was really, uh, Cy really excelled at that time. He was really doing good, like he was winning all the time or very close to winning all the time. I remember when he won the Nationals for the first time in Legend up in Barrie, Ontario. I remember uh, that was another race where he came from the back to get up there and I remember him sitting in about fourth with about two or three or so. There wasn't very many laps left. And I remember him coming to the front and I remember that making that pass in turn three, you know, coming out of that turn three into turn four and, and winning the race. Uh, that kind of dramatic fashion, you know, that, that's what, we, you know, that's what I always sort of, the ones that stick out the most, the drama, you know, the, you want that kind of excitement. You don't really want the complacent or the comfortable driver. It's okay to sit there and get the points at the end of the year. It's, no, it's sort of like, let's go for it, you know? So I was, was a good hard racer and he, I mean, he still is really. I mean, he went down to those little cars and he became, well, champion of the world, they called it because he went down to Charlotte, North Carolina and raced down there. He won, he won everything there was down there. He not only competed with those guys, but he outdid them. So, uh, you know, here's this guy from Nova Scotia, nobody knew anything about, who's that guy? It didn't take long before they knew who Cy was. So Cy, actually, he's pretty well known south of the border down there, especially more so with the Legends cars. But, uh, I mean, he's beat the who's who's of Legends car racing in the U.S., for sure. The man always had that big old smile on when he was in the car. 
and you'd happen to look in the mirror and see him coming behind you. Back in the day of our open face helmets, all you could see was that big smile. You knew you were going to get a little tap in the bumper. He might not have been able to get by you, but if he could get to you, I'm here. I'm here. As a racer, he was great, and uh, he, he would do anything that he could to get by you if you were in his way or whatever, and sometimes he'd help you. Gary Clamberg up on the outside there. Cy Harvey gives him a little how do you do. Uh, <laughs> call that the chrome horn. However, they don't use chrome bumpers on these cars anymore, but uh, Cy Harvey lets uh, the number six car, Koskulix, know that he's there. And yeah, Cy's having a good run out in the front there. Smith's closing in on him, though, and you got to remember, these guys are nemesis of their own. Uh, like, uh, they, they both have a reputation for uh, <clears throat> liking it a little rougher. They'll play it any way you want to play it. I guess Atlanta is a pretty good way of putting it. He's about as hard-nosed of a racer, I think, as I've ever come up across. And, um, you know, he wants to win. He wants to get to the front. He wants to pass cars. There's a joy in that. And uh, he's going to do whatever he's got to do to do it. And you be if you're the rookie sitting there looking at him, He's going to take advantage of that. He'll school you. He calls it school. I've been schooled by Cy. Quite a few guys have been schooled by Cy. We were in Shediac racing, and uh, I had won, I don't know, two or three races in a row, and Cy was off uh, to Florida or wherever. And, and uh, anyway, he came back to Shediac to race uh, against us, and he said, I hear there's a new hot dog in town, and I'm here to see if I can take him off his pedestal, right? So, so uh, we're out there in a heat race, me, him, Daryl Maher, and uh, I, I still remember we come off the corner and we all got together and I'm in the air looking out the windshield and size off on the side with the wheel tore off his car and Daryl's car's wrecked. And uh, there wasn't enough lock nuts to go around for everybody's arms that get ripped off the steering. So Cy, making sure I was safe, you take the nuts, he said, I'll run mine without, right? And so he put his car together and he's standing back looking at it and he sets his car up with a string and looking at it and uh, just standing back looking at it saying yeah that looks good and we go out and race Cy wins I finish second and I'm all over his bumper and I'm pushing him and pushing him and then he gets out of the car and he says where were you hands in the air where were you right like to let on I uh, wasn't there right so it was uh, so there's memories like that that I all take with me for years right so they call him the legend he, uh, and I mean, he made that name. He's been around, everybody knows him. Um, he's, he's done an awful lot for the sport in so many ways, other than what he's just done on track, you know? So to be called the legend, that pretty well says it all, doesn't it? You know? It is now it's the legend. That's how you guys had remembered it as, but you would go back like 20 years or so, it was Sly Sly. That was the original nickname. <laughs> he may not want to talk about that nickname, but that certainly was the original one. It's been the legend now though, yeah. <laughs> They've been calling him that for years, right? And he was like on the track, like they, say, they said, oh, here comes back, Sly's coming back on, you know, like if he'd been off for a pit stop or something, and they'd expect him to do something really rash or something, you know? Okay, we got a restart now. So I Harvey had to go to the pitch. Cameron Conrad, a lap car on the inside, gives the lead now to Doug Stokes. So there we got trouble there. We were talking earlier. There's uh, Frank Fraser Sr. and Cy Harvey coming together as the field comes back under the yellow flag. Long standing battle between uh, Frank Fraser, Cy Harvey, and uh, something you don't want to do is get Cy Harvey all frustrated. Cy Harvey's come to a stop on the front stretch and uh, He's been black flagged by uh, starter Art Steves for uh, unsportsmanlike conduct uh, a little bit uh, ago there. And uh, a little bit frustrated, so I uh, just out trying to uh, vent his frustrations a little bit. He's going to go over and uh, talk to uh, Mascar officials and see if he can uh, let them know that he's not too pleased with the whole deal. Uh, everybody was against Sai. I mean, Sai against the world, really. But And he, and he always came through on top, so. Cy Harvey was known outside of the circle. You know, it wasn't just at the racetrack. He, he was big. He's still Cy Harvey. He still brings the people in. They still come to see him. And he's still a good interview. And he always gets a laugh. And he's still got that big smile on. So we're here with the legend Cy Harvey. What brings you to the Atlantic Outdoor Sports and RV Show? He who dies with the most toys wins. <laughs> there you go. The, the thing that I remember the most um, about when we were racing hobby stock cars and that sort of stuff and at Scotia, my, my early days of racing, was I was racing against 15 or 20 cars with Harvey racing on the quarter panel. He helped more people, like there was, 
it was almost should have been called the uh, Harvey Auto hobby stock class, right? Because it was Harvey Auto on a lot of the cars that I raced against. And so you'd, you'd race them because they were part of the, what we called our racing family. Because the name was on the car, we uh, respected them and that's just the way it went, so. You know, I think him helping people was to kind of give people a shot. Like he's a, I think it's fair to say that like, you know, the way he grew up, he sort of made a lot of his own destiny in a way. He made a lot of choices and kind of did it on his own and had to make his own way. And I think that like when he helps people out or he sees that kind of stuff, it's because he sort of sees it, um, sees himself in that. He's got a heart the size of all outdoors. He'll do anything for anybody. Um, personally, I've had some bad times and so he's been there to help me. Um, I know he's helped a lot of people. He hates to see anybody in a bad place. Um, he wants to see people do well and he'll help you get there. And, and that on a personal basis and as far as the racing goes. I've been fortunate enough, I've raced snowmobiles for Cy Harvey, I've raced cars for Cy Harvey. He loves to see you do good and, and he just likes being a part of it. It's not all about Cy Harvey. What I'm so happy for him about is that in a way, this, uh, I think, validates a lot of um, what he's gone through and validates the, in a way, that effort, that like all or nothing attitude, which, you know, is great if you win, but if you lose, you got nothing. And so to, to race with that kind of mindset for so many years, um, yeah, there's been some championships and yeah, there's been a lot of wins, but like, it's kind of, this is the ultimate of having something to show for, right? Even for those times that you lost, because that builds your character, builds to all these people talking about you, all that kind of stuff, and I think really, it's an acknowledgement of all that, what he's gone through, and that he can be proud of, and hear all these people say wonderful things about him, which probably is making him uncomfortable, but that's fine. Um, and I'm just happy that he has something that he can like, show for it. Well, Si, I'm very happy to hear that you're going to be inducted and, uh, and you really deserve it. And uh, keep your head up and keep your stick on the ice, as they say in hockey. But uh, we'll keep racing. Si, bud, uh, I don't know if you really know how much of a hero you were to me all those years, but you have been. Um, you know, I, I appreciate everything I've been able to do with you in the sport, uh, driving your stuff. Thank you very much for that. And... Uh, you know, the big thing, we're, we're still active in that, so uh, I'm looking forward to some more good memories to come here. We're not done yet. You're not done yet. Anyway, congratulations, bud, and thanks for everything. Cy, so uh, uh, I'd like to thank you for everything you've done for me personally, racing. Uh, you've been a mentor of mine for a long time and hopefully further into the future. And uh, just so you can see, there's a couple of little tears here because it's emotional for me to, to have you as my mentor and everything I've learned from you. So. Thank you very much and congratulations on the induction into the Hall of Fame. 2019 East Hans Sport Hall of Fame inductee, Cy Harvey.